Well, hello, goodbye, and hello again. It's Cool Dude Clem here, and welcome to another episode of Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Anyway, if you hadn't guessed by now, by the title of this video and what you can see on the shelf here, I'm going to build a vacuum tube Tesla coil. Now I know some of you are saying, it's the 21st century, nobody uses tubes anymore, it's obsolete technology, yeah shut up, I don't care, it's my channel and I'll tube if I want to. So anyways, all this stuff that you can see here is what's going to be used and we're going to go through this from start to finish. So from power supplies to experimenting with the actual coils themselves, getting some results and adding a staccato circuit to make it even bigger and cooler and rawr. That's all going to be coming up in future videos on this project, four, maybe five videos from now. So anyway, like any good electronics project, you're going to need power supplies. So. That's what I'm going to do in this video, make a power supply for each part of the circuit and then we'll get on with something a little bit more interesting. So I thought we'd start with the most important part of any Tesla coil, the high voltage power supply. And of course the power supply for the filament and the staccato controller as well. But I must warn you, this is a power supply that if you fall around with it, it can kill you. 5.6 thousand volts is not a nice thing to have across the body. So if you kill yourself, don't come crying to me. I gave you plenty of warning. These, this and these are going to be for the high voltage power supply, which is going to give me between 5 and 6 thousand volts DC. Okay, well here's the high voltage power supply done. So as you can see, it's a very simple circuit. We've got a microwave oven transformer here. And there's the power switch. So here you can see a closer look inside this thing. So, got a microwave oven transformer. And then that's connected to these two capacitors, which are connected in parallel. So that's about two microfarads of capacitance. And then from the capacitor, we've got a wire going to the output terminal and then another wire going to the transformers ground and this thing this rather odd looking thing here is the diode that I made if we take a look inside you can see that it's actually made if I can just get this wire to move it's actually made from several smaller diodes strung together in series to form a 12,000 volts 1 amp diode. And so this is the output terminal. I took the input filter capacitor out of a magnetron. I've got another one right here to show you. And I've got a bit, few, couple of bits and pieces attached to it. But you can see that's what that looks like. I shorted these two terminals together so we get about 700 picofarads of capacitance there. So this is the ground, this is the high voltage output, and another good thing is that the capacitance is going to stop any high frequencies getting back into the power supply and blowing up the diode. There it is, there is the high voltage power supply for the Tesla coil. It's very simple. This is where the mains goes in. The switch to turn it on. And your output comes out here. Okay, this is running ballasted. I'm using my heater as a ballast. So let's see what that's like on with a little less ballast. It's about the same. Okay, I'll turn that off. Unplug. Gotta be safe. This is dangerous. This could kill you. I'm going to make sure that it is 
completely discharged. I did see a little spark there, so yeah. Better safe than sorry. Right then, so this is the schematic for the high voltage power supply. As you can see, there's really not much to it. We've got a microwave oven transformer in series with a ballast and a switch. Then we've got these microwave oven capacitors and these eight 1.6 thousand volt rated diodes. You don't have to use EM513s. I mean, hell, you could use a bunch of 1N4007s if you wish, but... Anyway, these are the diodes that I chose because you get them nice and cheap and they do the job. So we've got our voltage doubler here. And finally, out here, this is not to suppress any ripple because we want lots of ripple. That's what gives vacuum tube Tesla coils their characteristic sword-like sparks. All this is doing is stopping any of that high frequency getting back into the diodes and destroying them because they can blow up. Personally, I've run Tesla coils without that capacitor there and never had a diode blow up on me yet, but better safe than sorry. Actually, the capacitor is more like that because I'm using the input filter capacitor out of a magnetron and I've basically just put the two capacitors together like you can see here. Okay, so now I've talked about the high voltage power supply. Let's talk about the low voltage supplies. Now, this is the power supply for the filament. It's basically a toroidal transformer because I chose one of these because they're easier to wind. And I took the secondary of this, well, one of the secondaries anyway. The other secondary is still on there just in case I might need it for anything, but in place of the main secondary, I wound my own secondary onto this using relatively thick wire. What is that? It was actually three core wire, but I twisted the ends together, so it's like one piece of thick wire. So, one end of the secondary goes to the filament through this wire here, and the other end of the secondary, instead of going directly to the other end of the filament, it goes through this resistor with a switch placed across it, and conveniently, this switch is marked high and low, so what I can do is switch this resistor in and out of the circuit so when it's on high we basically this resistor might just as well not be there and we might just as well have this wire connected directly to there and when it's in low this resistor is back in the circuits so the power has to make its way through this resistor and then into the other end of the filament and this is a 2.2k resistor sorry a 2.2 ohms resistor rated for 15 watts this is basically to give the filament of the tube a soft start ok so let's just see this in action here so I'll plug this in and the filament should glow dimly ok I can see it coming up now so make sure that starts glowing and when the filament has come up as bright as it's going to get through the resistor you can then just switch the resistor out of the circuit and we have full power it's always a good idea to soft start the filament on tubes like this because if you just go straight from nothing to full power it's not going to last very long or so I've heard also another reason why you want to use a pretty large transformer is tubes like this are going to require a lot of current to light the filament. I mean, this one here takes about 9 amps on full power. The data sheet it specifies 11 amps, but my measurements make it 9 amps. But still, I cannot tell you how many turns of wire that I've used because you're not likely to have the same transformer as me or the same kind of wire as me. I just happen to have this lying around and I know this would be powerful enough, so that's why I decided to use it. And at the moment, um, when this is unloaded, this will give out about 14 volts. And with the load of the tube's filament, that brings the voltage down to about 13 volts. And yes, I know that's about half a volt more than what we need, but you know, that's perfectly okay. It's not going to hurt it. So here's the power supply for the filament. I don't think I need to explain this. It pretty much explains itself. I mean, you know, got a transformer here, then a resistor with a switch across it 
And that's connected in series with the filament. What more is there to explain? Okay, so here's the power supply that is going to power the staccato circuit. And like I said before, adding one of those to your coil isn't completely necessary, but it will improve the performance and it will make the tube run cooler. And here's the power supply to power that circuit, which I will get on and build at a later point in this video, or um, rather this series of videos. So let's plug it in. And for once, I can actually see the display on the meter. Basically, what we've got here is a transformer and a four-wave rectifier consisting of two diodes, then a couple of smoothing capacitors, a 12-volt voltage regulator, another smoothing capacitor, and, well, that's pretty much it. So, I'm measuring the voltage at the output of the voltage regulator, and it seems a bit low. It should be a bit higher than that. Uh, maybe that voltage regulator isn't very good, but... Um, It'll be good enough. So we've got about 11.85 volts out there. And going into the voltage regulator, I can just take it from here. We've got about 16.6. .6. So 16.6 in. So I just put the meter right there. 16.6 .6 in. Eleven point eight five out. Anyway, the power supply for the staccato controller I haven't drawn because it's included in this schematic here. So what I'll just do is highlight the part of the schematic that actually is power supply and just zoom in on that. It's going to look a bit ugh, but not much I can do about that. So there's the power supply. I've got the transformer over here, and then there's the two diodes, voltage regulator, smoothing capacitors, and yeah. That's basically it for this video. Next video, we're going to be looking at coils and how to tune the thing. But anyway, yep. Until then, until next time, goodbye.